My name is John Rudden. I'm an assistant professor in residence at the University of Connecticut. I'm also the assistant director of faculty development programs in our Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning. My main job at UConn is to teach a very large anatomy and physiology course. There's about 800 students, and I also teach a class in plain language science communication. So active learning is really an umbrella term used to describe any teaching practice that promotes student engagement. So it could be students talking with the instructor, it could be students working collaboratively and talking to each other. The buzzword that people like to use is that it's, it's reciprocal. There's two-way communication. So classically, it might be a, you know, an oral dialogue. I ask a question, a student gives me an answer back. Um, now, with the emergence of educational technologies, active learning can also be written. It could be students using their cell phone, their tablet, their computer to answer a question. It could be students working collaboratively through a discussion board or through a case study online. So I think it can take many forms uh, in light of the technology. It's an engagement tool and it's a learning tool also. We do know that student performance increases, um, students' connection to their major increases. We know um, that it's a more inclusive teaching practice. It helps to bring in more students who maybe are first generation college students, maybe students of color, um, students that don't have a whole lot of background in science. I think the, the biggest problem for most people is probably time investment. In order to do active learning, it usually requires prepping new material, new lectures. Most of us, you know, get in the habit of teaching similarly from semester to semester, and there's comfort in that. And when you step out of that comfort zone and do active learning, all of a sudden there can be a little bit of chaos inside the classroom. You, know, you don't quite know where things are going to go. So you have to be okay with shooting from the hip a little bit and uh, guiding the discussion, facilitating the discussion, because it's a lot less cookie cutter. Yeah, um, large classes present unique challenges for active learning. I think it really just depends upon the instructor's comfort level and, and their own level of ambition. Um, you don't have to completely transform the class from day one. You could start off just by using a response system, that's how we got started. And then as you get comfortable, you can transition into some of the more complicated things, like for example, uh, having the students get up and move around. But one of the things I always say to the students is even in this class of 400, when I ask a question and you answer it, that class just becomes the two of us. So it doesn't really matter how many people are in the room. So in talking to other faculty about active learning, I think you know first and foremost, the biggest concern is time investment. Um, second to that, I would say the, the biggest argument that, that people would make is that I'm good at lecturing. Students like my lecturing, um, and that's what they're comfortable with. Why, why should I change something that's been working? You know, if it, ain't, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. What I would say back to them is that that might be working for you, it might be working for some of the students, but the research would show that it's, it's not working for everybody in the classroom. And ultimately, our job is to, to try to be equitable, to do as much as we can for as many students as possible. And active learning is a, a way to do that. The, the easiest active learning technique to use is, is probably a response system. So right now we're using Top Hat. Our lectures are, are about an hour and 15 minutes. And so we try to build anywhere between five and 10 response questions in there for the students to answer. Sometimes the students answer them, them individually. And more commonly, we do think pair share style questions. So I'll ask a question and I'll um, display a list of answers and then ask the students to work with the people around them to come up with an answer. To try to encourage them to share out, usually I'll, I'll walk around to the groups and say, you know, do you mind sharing your answer to the class? And it, it takes some of the pressure off of the students. Um, a lot of students don't like to hear their own voices in a class that large. So by doing it that way, it kind of creates a safe space for um, students sharing their, their own ideas. The other big thing that we try to do is get the students out of their seats in the classroom. Something happens to students when they sit in their chairs inside the classroom where they just expect to have this passive experience with someone talking to them. Probably because they get comfortable too, just like the professors do. And so I found that just by having them stand up and move around, automatically they're more engaged. Uh, it opens up you know, all sorts of new possibilities, like we can use the walls, we can hang poster board on the walls, we can hang post-its on the walls, and really take advantage of the, the physical space that we have. Probably my favorite thing to do is something called a jigsaw. 
So you have the whole class break up into small groups and each group works on a specific problem for a period of time and then they break apart and go to the other groups and share their problem and their solution. So it basically turns the students into teachers. It lets them teach another group all about this thing that they just spent the past 10 or 15 minutes learning about. Formative assessment was a major part of, of active learning. All active learning does not have to be formative assessment, but especially within the, the context of the big classes, when you have students um, that are surrounded by the sea of other students, it's, you know, they disengage. And the biggest problem that they face is that they don't know what they don't know. And so by doing active learning and giving them these opportunities to, to share what they know or to realize that they don't know anything is, is really valuable. And it's valuable to the instructors too, because I need to know if my students don't understand something. Most of the students, I think, still come in looking at their professor as if they were an encyclopedia or a, a genius, which I'm not, by the way. Um, but if they see me that way, then they might say, well, I'm not a genius, I can't do this. But the more that they ask questions and the more that they get me to a point where I say, that's a great question, I don't know the answer, let's find out together, they can say, wow, he's, he's just human. Um, maybe, you know, he's just a little bit further along in this process than me. And maybe if I work really hard, I can get to that point too. You know, I don't think of myself any longer as being the sole information provider. My job is to facilitate. Uh, my job is to, to guide the students. I think now is the time for active learning because we know that there are some serious problems in higher ed. For example, we know that students of color and first generation students are more likely to drop out of STEM majors and that's a problem because having diversity of viewpoints makes all of our fields and, and ultimately our profession stronger. And I think active learning is, is a way to bring people together and really let those diverse viewpoints be heard uh, inside of a classroom. Active learning is a scientific teaching practice. It is evidence-based and every day more and more studies come out providing more evidence and, and new ways to do active learning and new ways to en engage the class. Ultimately, I think active learning is the best thing that we have available right now. But like anything, as we collect more data, we might refine our, our hypothesis, you know, we could be having this conversation 20 years from now and maybe we won't be doing active learning then, maybe we'll be doing something else. But for right now and based upon all the evidence, it seems like active learning is, is what we all should be doing. I think active learning is the, the present and the future of higher ed.